Tomorrow is World Teen Mental Wellness Day. It's a time to raise awareness about the mental health issues teens face and how we can all help. And joining me now with more is Kaylee Aquaro, Acting Administrator of the Department of Health's Child and Adolescent Mental Health Division. Good morning, Kaylee. Thanks for joining us today. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Can you tell us more about raising awareness about teen mental health and why it's so important? Well, of course, awareness is a really important part of being able to recognize concerns and provide support for teens. And actually, I feel like as a society, we are becoming more aware of teen mental health issues. I think now we need to move towards mental health acceptance. And what I mean by that is that we need to really accept that mental health struggles are a part of life. They're part of the human condition. And that when we stigmatize and discriminate, we actually create barriers for people getting the support and the help that they need. We know that 20 to 30% of our youth experience a mental health challenge, and it's so important that we meet those challenges with understanding and support so that we're investing in the health of our youth. And what are some of the signs that kids or teens may be struggling with their mental health? Because, you know, they, they change throughout the year. So sometimes their personalities change and that's totally normal. You know, we have teenagers who just like to stay in their rooms and that's okay too. So how do we know what's normal and what might be of concern? Sure, that's, that's something I think that parents wonder about a lot. But the truth is, uh, parents know usually when something doesn't feel right, even if they can't exactly put their finger on why they're worried. Um, unfortunately, a lot of times fear or stigma or even just societal norms about what's polite or what's nosy uh, sometimes prevent us from asking someone if they're okay. But if parents notice that their teen seems very sad or has intense worries that seem to be getting in the way of their day-to-day -day activities. Or sometimes if they notice that uh, something that the youth used to really love and be interested in, they don't seem to have any interest in those things anymore. Those can all be signs that they're struggling with their mental health. You also wanna be on the lookout for dramatic changes in behavior even things like eating and sleeping, um, things like that can be a sign that the youth is struggling. So if you do see these signs, if you have a lot of concern about your child or teen's mental health, what should you do? You know, the number one thing that I would recommend that you do is talk to your teen. Uh, let them know that you're worried and ask them how they're feeling. Of course, sometimes teens don't want to talk to their parents about sensitive issues or, or maybe the things that are on their mind. And if they express that, we can still support them as parents. We can still be understanding about that and we can let them know other ways that they can get help. We can try to help them figure out if there's somebody else that they would feel comfortable talking to. Or if they don't want to talk to somebody, but they would be comfortable going to a website or uh, texting or chatting with someone, um, we encourage them to check out the Hawaii Cares website or they can call, text, or chat 988. So there's ways um, for them to get support if they don't want to talk to their parents. If they do open up to you about what they're struggling with, it's so important for parents to just listen and just try to understand where they're coming from without judging them. Showing that you notice that something is wrong and that you care and you want to help is so important. And if your teen feels heard and understood, that actually can improve their mental health. Um, we also let parents know uh, there's a website called helpyourcakey.com. It's a great resource for parents. And so if you're just interested in learning more about teen mental health, that's a great place to start. And then finally, Kaylee, I know that we've been addressing parents and grandparents and maybe legal guardians as to what they can do. But if there's a child or maybe a teenager watching right now, what do you want to say th to them directly about their mental health and also about the resources available? Sure. Well, there's been a ton of research on uh, what we can all do to support our mental health, teens included. Feeling connected is one of the most powerful protective factors for teens and for all of us. If we have caring adults and friends in our lives that we can talk to 
um, that helps us be more resilient when we have mental health stressors. And of course, teens, if you're worried about your mental health, if you're struggling, please talk to somebody. That's the number one thing you can do to improve your mental health and improve how you're feeling. Um, and of course, there's a lot of research on how taking care of your body can have a huge impact on your mental health. So getting outside, getting a lot of physical activity, eating right, getting enough sleep, um, all of those things can have a huge impact on how you're feeling. And there's also research to suggest that creative pursuits can help with your mental health. So if you're someone that loves music or dance or art, I mean, these are all things that you can do for yourself to make yourself more resilient. Uh, it's very important for teens to know that don't be embarrassed. You're not alone. And there is help out there, resources, where you can find help and strengthen your mental health. Kaylee Aquaro with the DOH, appreciate you so much. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much.